Good morning, traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, August 14th. Michael Boutros here with you this morning. DJ Ya, good morning to you. Uh, Marco, I saw your question. I, I gave you a response there. Good question. I hope um, that clears things up. He was asking in particular, is there any reason why I use the two hour chart as opposed to the one hour chart? Marco, I just do that for the sake of analysis to map out the levels. So it's a little bit clearer of the broader picture that we're trading within, but certainly when you're executing, uh, you're going in much deeper than that. So I hope that offers some clarity there. Uh, Mark, uh, Peter, Pete, Ty, great to see you guys all in the room. So I really, I really don't have that much on the table this morning. I've been um, stalking Aussie, haven't touched it. Dollar yen, we jumped into that short yesterday. Euro still stalking, not doing anything just yet. Dollar CAD getting a little messy. Uh, we'll hit all those trades today, guys. Crude, okay, we were looking for the rebound in crude. It went deeper first, but you're getting that rebound today. It's a little early there, but that one's been moving higher. And gold, I think, um, you know, Jamie's chart maps up perfectly with mine. I still think you get that, that drive down towards 1180, but uh, we'll take a look at gold prices as well. Any other questions, trade setups you guys want to review? As always, feel free to throw them on the message board at any point. Let's jump right in. So um, we'll go over last night's update in a moment. I do want to just go over the DXY and what we were looking at to start the week. You know, the Euro and DXY setups haven't changed a bit since the start of the week. We started off with the assumption that we're coming in some resistance on the DXY, uh, some support on the Euro. Just to bring your attention again to remind you where we are, uh, you know, that red slope on the weekly charts for the DXY, still governing resistance, okay? so. A little bit of an adjustment here. This is the uh, 38.2 line of the pitchfork that we've been working with from the 2015 highs. Uh, support, 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 break, acceleration. That same slope is resistance. Also, former slope support, parallel extending off the high that we made in mid, what is that, or late 2000, no, mid 2012. We saw a resistance break, acceleration, support, support break, acceleration, resistance. We're there right now. So you have a confluence region of structural resistance. It seems to be holding as of now, but um, you know we want to be cautious here because we're fighting an uphill uphill battle here. And the momentum is checking resistance at 70. Also something to keep in mind as we eye down this weekly chart. So support is the same level that we were watching for so many weeks. Those nine weeks that we held below that 200. Uh, weak moving average. The long moving average converges on the 50 line for the current upslope that we've been working with off the lows, right? Boom, boom, boom. So that's now near-term support. Give it 95.30 or so. Um, a break below that is what would be needed to suggest that a near-term high is in play to move lower. All things held constant. We are simply checking confluence resistance, okay? Both uptrend resistance and downtrend resistance. So certainly a level of interest here on the DXY from a weekly standpoint. Looking at this from the daily, okay, here's the slope that we've been following just from the start of the year within the confines of this pitchfork. This is the one that we were looking at in the weekly chart. Basic slope support, parallel, touch, touch, break, acceleration, support, same parallels off the January highs and the highs that we made late uh, in May. You could see, again, resistance in every single time we've touched this resistance slope. Uh, or the slope region, we've seen a turnaround in price. So look, the um, if you're using trading view, guys, you might be noticing that the candles are all jacked up since the start of the uh, since the start of the week. There's some sort of bad tick here. So don't mind you know all these daily stretches that look like they've already tested support 95.15. They have not. So we're basically still trading up against this upper slope uh, resistance. Here's what it looks like on the intraday charts. Okay, there's that slope region of resistance again. Okay, no change, no change to any of the levels that we had highlighted earlier in the week. Okay, daily chart looks the same. We're just testing these levels. Intraday, all we've done is gone for a concerted perfect tag of 96.52, that soft target that we had highlighted early in the week, and that's the opening range high. So really clean in that the weekly opening range is taking shape right below structural resistance on the long term, on the near term, Watch 96.52 on the top side pop, 97.10, 97.20 is still the same region that we highlighted on uh, Sunday. Okay, that's kind of the big zone of resistance that you'd want to look for on a top side breach. That basically takes you into the structural resistance that you're looking at here. Okay, um, 
and then up into 90, 70, 78 if we get the break. All things held constant, like I said, um, you know, we're up against resistance. Ty good point says it looks like a bull flag very well could be. So for those of you who are not familiar, uh, bull flags or pennants, uh, whatever you want to call them, typically are, um, you know, bullish continuation patterns. See if there's any merits to that slope. Looks like a two-point touch here. Looks like a two-point touch here. Absolutely. Puts further emphasis on a, whoops, not what I wanted to do. Uh, puts further emphasis on a topside break right here. That would be an objective weekly opening range tie, would clear the bull flag type of play and would validate resumption of the broader uptrend, right? Um, all things held constant. Again, we have to be cautious here. So for the DXY, you, you know, it's again, heavily driven by the Euro. Obviously you're seeing a lot of this event risk. Guys, I wrote yesterday in the piece, geopolitics, unfortunately, are now your biggest event risk for the week. You know, we got uh, Eurozone GDP data and overnight uh, came in a little bit stronger than expected. You didn't get the kick that you wanted to see uh, materialize in Euro. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, we have to see how this pans out. Um, let, let's take a look at your, any questions here on DXY? So further highlights, right, tie the same exact levels we've been watching. So lower parallel for that uh, to invalidate the bullish uh, flag type of formation would still be 96, downside targets unchanged, resistance 96.52. So one thing to look at is momentum. You know, ever since the stretch that we made late last week on the breach higher, momentum broke into overbought condition on the pullback. Here's 40 support. It's exactly what you'd want to see in continued uptrends. So certainly we can't start fading this with any type of conviction anytime soon. Okay, we really need to see a, a material shift um, in price. Let me just look what the 30-minute chart looks like real quick. Yeah, not much to do on the near-term front here. So we'll keep a close eye out here on um, on the DXY. Oops. There you go. All right. So um, that's number one. Let's circle back to, I mean, I guess let's just cover Euro now and then we'll come back to Aussie. So here's um, the inverse of the trade, as it were, uh, with what we're looking at with Euro. So the weekly chart, um, you know, still has room to the downside, guys, in my humble opinion. 1448 near-term resistance, nothing changed. Um, Ty, what do you mean, Williams? What is that? Is pegged at the highs for what? Is that the DXY you're talking about? So for the Euro, um, two levels to look at. Uh, Peter says, hi, Mike, can you look at Kiwi Dollar, please? You know what? It's not on the list. It is now, Pete. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. That's a buy engage, says uh, it will resolve higher. For the DXY, Ty, is that what you're talking about still? So that would make sense with what we're looking at. Um, he says, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, that would make sense with what we're looking at here with Euro. So, um, you know, the 200 long week moving average comes in just lower from where we are now. One, with, what is that, 113.60s or so? Just lower is this big spot. It's kind of where I really want to see a, a, a more substantiated reversal rebound just below 113. I don't know if we quite get that low. Mindful of two things here. Momentum on the weekly charts, checking support at 30. Um, and again, obviously we gap lower into the open of the week, we fill the gap and now we're holding the weekly opening range just below that 50% retracement, which is a decent pivot in price here, okay? So watch you know, how we react today. Daily chart for Euro is also very interesting. Here's the daily chart, okay? We threw this on uh, on Sunday. We were talking about the fact that you know, even the ugliest declines can have pretty clear structure. And this is what it looked like early in the week. Here's the intraday chart on the 240 minute, 
lower median line parallel to that pitchfork converged right at that 1366. It was a soft target that we had highlighted, um, but boy, it was the exact low. Um, and here we are with a, with a nice little rebound to start the week. So look, uh, Euro is just simply setting up its weekly opening range right above near-term support. Like I said, still resistance 1448 on a stretch 1495, both levels of which I still think could give way to an exhaustion uh, pullback. A drive lower, 1366, you're looking for 1312. Now, I know Jamie's looking for 1340s or so, guys, just a little bit lower. Um, you know, from a swing side of things, that gives you a little bit more room. From an intraday trading standpoint, when I look back in price, sort of the only major is, you know, region here, in my opinion, that looks of interest as far as pivot in price uh, is that 1312 level, okay? And the slope of the broader operative pitchfork, the same parallel, dropped off that low that we made um, in May, okay? Um, basically converges on that 1312 soft target. So if we get the downside break, okay, um, both levels of which, you know, I want to see this thing start to start, start showing some support. Now, my problem and the thing that I want to always keep in mind, guys, is even if we do get the bounce, we're only playing that as, a, as sort of a corrective near-term play still. The problem here is that the objective measured move, technical analysis 101 of the consolidation break, actually gives you a measured target down into 111.60. That's the measured move. The 618 is 111.86. Um, you know, it's a deep, deep cut. I'm not, you know, I'm not, my confidence level of us getting way down here is not really that high right now. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. We're focused on the near-term picture as it stands. Tentatively, still bear sub 114.95, um, but looking for possibility for exhaustion at one of these two levels. Again, a downside break below 1366, 1312, basically 1375, 1380. I'd start to look for possible exhaustion near those lower parallels. But I have no positioning here on, on Euro here yet. I don't. Um, see anything that's necessarily like screaming out at us to do anything. So patience pays in these trades, specifically after you get these major stretches. You got a clean weekly opening range taking shape just above support. Uh, look for the break of the 113.66, 114.48 range. And, you know, to go along with what you were saying, Ty, earlier, you know, this looks like it could be a bear flag, right? If we go along those same... Um, Along those same type of uh, thought process, it's not the cleanest, but look what happens. Convergence, 1448, still resistance. Support at that slope, but you're basically looking for a weekly opening range break to validate resumption, still 1366. So in either event, um, the levels are pretty clean as far as what we should be looking for, I think. You know, it sucks. You get these huge breaks <laughs> and then the market runs. You know, we're stuck in this kind of low vol environment for a while. You get these big surges in it in, in, in volatility, you get all excited, you start to position, you look for the moves sort of continue, and then things start to peter out like this. Um patience. We'll 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 get that, you know, we're still in the summer doldrums for all intents and purposes, but I do think things will start to uh We'll, we'll start to materialize. Now, what I said earlier, the headline risk, guys, this whole thing with Turkey, um, you know, you're already hearing people start talking contagion risk and whatnot. Um, just don't get sucked into the headlines, okay? Be aware of what's going on. You know, always have a Twitter handle feed um, with your favorite sort of uh, wires that you're following. We try to keep you updated of anything that's major coming out, but... Um, you know, whether it's the tariff skirmish or whether it's the whole Turkey thing with their, you know, currency essentially falling off the side of the planet. Um, you know, be mindful of that stuff. So not much to do just right yet, but uh, I do think we'll get something here on Euro soon. Um, next up on tap, number three. I'm going through everything that I haven't gotten position on except dollar yen, which is number four. But we'll do that. We'll do uh, uh, Aussie first. Here's uh, what Aussie looks like now. Very similar to the uh, euro in that there's not really a play per se just yet. This thing's continuing to slide a little bit lower. Here's the picture that we looked at yesterday with Aussie. Um, really just wanted to map out the levels. You know, 72.98 is an interesting level because it was uh, a target on the downside. But it's also now the concerted weekly opening range high. See that? 
Here's your weekly open. We spiked right into that region. That's the weekly opening range high now. Bearish invalidation, no surprise to anyone. 7230, 7228, excuse me, 7236, this region here. So the ideal play, again, what I'm looking for in Aussie, here's the daily chart. I guess I want to show you the weekly chart first. Um, you know, slope, just real basic, median line off the high. On a closed basis, you know what I mean? The market has respected that slope pretty well. So we're there now. 73.27, former swing lows, 6.18, right? That's the level to be to invalidate the short side. Right now, you know, what do you do here? This thing is an oversold condition. Price is checking structural support on the longer term picture. Not something I'm trying to fight, right? We just posted an outside uh, weekly candle last week to the move lower. So unfortunately, my favorite pair, not really a play here either. Here's what the daily chart looks like. Okay, even within the confines of this near-term slope, this is just off the late February high. Two tags, three tags, confirms, four tags. A parallel off that, extended off these lows, saw some pivots in price, nothing too major, but there it caught a low. Again, pivoting around it on both sides, caught a low. Here we are again. 618 extension of that decline comes in at 72.30 on the downside. Um, intraday. Same levels, right? Bigger risk for Aussie. If this consolidation wedge, triangle formation, whatever you want to call it, is legit, you're still bearish sub former triangle support turned resistance. Measured move takes you to target into 71.37. Again, a deeper, deeper cut. So it's not going to go in a straight shot. Could take months to materialize. Near term, you are seeing ongoing divergence. Price action making a series of lower lows, lower lows lower lows, a series of higher lows. So, you know, I, I'm kind of on the on the mindset of you do get Aussie data towards the latter part of the week. If we get a drive lower, 72.30, more specifically the 72 handle areas of which um, you could see some sort of exhaustion rebound, really nimble on any long positioning that I would even attempt on this. Um, Ultimately, if we get a drive higher towards 73.27, 73.30, be looking for exhaustion again. That's a big region. We were watching this for months, right? So if we get a drive back higher, this is where you would expect at least initial failure uh, before resumption. Ty says, can you pull the daily up long enough for a picture? Yeah, absolutely, Ty. Here's what it looks like, man. Let's zoom out. Does that help? So you're looking at two retracements here. The one in purple is the broader retracement from the 2016 advance. Uh, you can scratch that one. 100% extension, 61. Everything else is on point. This one's null and void. Broader bearish invalidation gets dropped down, or basically what would put you bullish is a 74.55 break, but that's way ahead of time. Um, but yeah, I'd be pretty comfortable with these levels here. Ty, does that help? He says, yes, thanks. FYI, 96.53 on DXY uh, put up. 96.53. What do you got there in 96.53? You look at that swing high from back there in July of last year, or was that June? Yeah, Ty, I see what you're talking about. Sure. The more factors we have at that level, the more stacked up confluence, whether it's sw former swing highs, former swing lows. I think this is what um, Ty's looking at, guys. Former swing lows, a touch there, a little drive lower, but markets don't work in a vacuum. The break did fuel acceleration. The reversal came right back, tested as support. Yeah, absolutely. 
I have it at 90, uh, 96.52, yeah, 96.53. Really, really nice level. Where did I get this 96? Uh, oh, I think that's where I caught this from. Ty. Yeah, that's where I got this from, actually. <laughs> so it is. Um, you can follow it back years, he says. I'll bet. I'll bet. A lot of times those levels, guys, are kind of hidden levels in the market where there's just inflection, right? Let's go back and see what uh, what Ty's talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. So basic support, right? A little bit of a drive. Resistance pivot. Absolutely. Good level. So I didn't have that mapped out here on the daily chart because I kind of like just want to keep this cleaner, but you could see it converges right on that slope anyway. So the levels are pretty clean on DXY. Any questions on um, the Aussie levels or where we go from here? I'm looking to see if we can't get a drive lower for a little bit more exhaustion. If we do get the reversal higher, at least a pop near term, um, you know, look for exhaustion ahead of 73.27. Uh, the highlighted move here, or the highlighted event risk for Aussie at least, is still going to be the uh, employment report that we get. Uh, I think it's tomorrow night. Okay. Aurelian says on Sunday the gap open lowered, not fully fill, uh, but a point or two. I doubt it fills to go lower but just noting Aurelian what pair is that on that you're talking about sorry I missed your question there so um just give me a quick reminder Aurelian which pair you were talking about there as far as the gap most of the gaps have filled, you know, in Aussie. Yeah, so in Aussie, um, the close was 72.98, the high was 72.99, and we filled the gap. This is hard to see it on the daily. So this is the 120 minute. So here's your Friday close. Uh, here's the gap close. Here's the gap lower. It looks like you know a couple hours after the open, we actually filled it uh, right here. So Aurelian, these are like actually like textbook plays. You know, typically, and I don't never want to use the word always in trading, right? But typically, um, you know, gap opens. Uh, if they are going to fill, they typically start to fill early in the week. Uh, and then after that gap is filled, typically the break of that initial range is a near-term play. So for example, here's the weekly open. We gap lower, we filled the gap, and then we, we made a new low. Once that range breaks, typically it gives you a little bit of a continuation. So this is why another reason I do think that Aussie still risks a little bit more of a dump lower um, before, we before we start trying to fade this. You know, we are getting divergence. We're getting all the hallmarks of it, but we're just not at a major key level in my mind. I mean, I'm looking at that slope for sure, but is it something I'd operate off of just trying to catch a low as the markets are in sell-off mode? Probably not yet. Probably not yet. And again, same thing here, Aurelian, when you're looking at the daily chart, he says it's a little bit harder to see. When you're looking at the daily chart, you, you, you know, the body doesn't matter. Here's the close. You just want to see that a wick extended and touched into that close before moving off. So we did technically fill that gap. He says, got it. Right on. All right. Cheers, mate. We're looking for Aussie. See if we can get some clarity here as we drift a little bit lower in price. Um, dollar yen, finally. can't believe I'm saying that, but dollar yen. <laughs> Here's what uh, the abomination looks like. So it's actually still pretty clear. Remember the dominant picture that we were looking at, the weekly chart I highlighted um, for you last night? Just wanted to show you 38.2, basic, basic, basic of the yearly stretch. This is the yearly range right here. 38.2 and the 52 week moving average, both converging uh, basically just above or at 110. Yeah, 109.91 is the 38.2. You got 110.18 as your two, uh, 52 week. So, area of support. 
Resistance, we talked about this yesterday. 1088 is sort of the initial level of resistance we want to see hold. 1162 is our bearish invalidation level, breach above that. Um, you're essentially looking for a stretch back up near 113. So the weekly chart, right? Bigger picture stuff. Daily chart looks like this. Now, it's tricky on the daily to get uh, excited. It's really the intraday chart that has... Um, you know, prompted action in my opinion, uh, just to look at things uh, kind of objectively here. So there's that 1088 level, okay? There's the upper median line parallel for the broader slope. So basically, as long as we stay below this slope, I know it's been messy, but we did pivot on it. And the intraday chart's pretty clear on that. The breaks, acceleration, two support wicks, break below, saw resistance, resistance. So as long as you stay below this, still thinking you get a move lower. Um, don't get too overzealous. The major longer term key support here is still 109.91. Okay. Um, you broke the slope as predicted. Again, I don't like uh, the word predicted, Ty. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I like the word predicted. I'm more, um, I believe in analysis, not predicting. So the, the conditions were right for the pullback. I think um, you do want to fade a little bit of position off. I've done that already. I'm not going to be um, too aggressive on this move, but. I certainly like the way at least it's starting to pan out. Look, there's so much at 109.90. Okay, let's just call it 110, whatever you want to call it. There's so much there. The 38.2, we already talked about that. 52 week, we already talked about that, just higher, right? So now you're talking about the 200 day and the 100 day moving averages converging on that slope or on that uh, Fibonacci level alongside slope into the next few days, into the next six days here into the 20th. So your basic lower median line parallel converges on all three of those things later in the week. The upper parallel obviously has been gorgeous, catching the highs, catching the highs. So um, you know, the, the, the move was a fade, the move was a fade. Now, the one thing that, I don't wanna say concerns me, it was a little bit, well, I'm a little, let me take a step back. Um, here's the intraday chart, right? <laughs> and here's the chart, the way we looked uh, last night. Okay, so the level was to look for 110.08, uh, 110.13. Uh, if we're going to get uh, the final drive lower, that's what we're looking for failure at. Well, that's exactly where the market uh, failed in overnight. We made a high of 111.15, uh, beautiful reversal. Here's the pullback. This is your first initial level. So, yeah. You know, 25, 30 pips. If you're in the short from 111.13 last night's high, uh, you want to take a little off here. This is your first inflection level. Again, just look right back in price, right? A little bit of a mess there, but breach, support, support. A little bit of a mess there, but support, 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 break, acceleration, initial resistance, break, initial support. Reversal ahead of 16 momentum on the intraday chart certainly bodes well. Um, for the move, but look, you, your stop should be at break even or better right now if you're holding anything from 111.13. Um, our swing trade, we don't want to mess with it, okay? If you've taken a trade based on the swing trade setup from yesterday, your entry was 111.08, your stop's still 111.28, uh, no change there. Uh, he's targeting 109.60. Just ahead of that 109.60 level, I do want to highlight that 109.90 level, guys. Keep your eye on that. Um, what I love about 109.16, that level that Jamie highlighted, is at 109.56, just four pips lower, is the corrective 100% extension. So even if this is just two equal legs off the high, 109.56 should be a clip, right? So all things held constant. I like it. Uh, we need to see this thing start to, 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 to pick up the pace here. Um, if we get through 111.14 and you're not in this thing, guys, it's not uh, something I would try to press at that point. Um, you know, at that point, you're, you're vulnerable for a little bit more of a drive higher. I do need to adjust uh, this. Nope. And this is good. Yeah, everything looks good. Everything looks good. Any questions on dollar yen? All righty then, that is number four. Okay. 
Looney, uh, it's ugly, but I think we, we have to keep following it just because, um, man, this thing just sails through major resistance regions and pivot regions like it's no one's business. Do you see this? We've been highlighting this 31, 31, 30 level, guys, for literally three months now, okay? Um, it's caught the highs, huge inflection point, my favorite Fibonacci plays, 618 retracement off the low, 100% or uh, 618 retracement off the high, excuse me, 100% extension off the low, really beautiful level. Caught the initial yearly opening range highs, broke lower, we broke here, thought it really, you know, we, we'd see some real acceleration, and we did for a few days before fizzling out. Here's this pullback, right? Here's the pivot again. We breached and closed above it last week. I noted on Sunday that we probably think this thing is still at risk for a move higher while above 131. Here we are crashing below 131 again. So what the heck do we do with this thing? And it's, you know, yeah, it pisses me off sometimes, but that's markets, guys. Um, I haven't been able to get my foot in it, but that's kind of been annoying me even more because it's 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 been one of the pairs that's actually moving. Um, I just don't have a good handle on it. You know what I mean? The, the ideal play, let me take a step back. We were looking for 3164 or this region for exhaustion, bearish and validation 3224. So there actually was an opportunity to get right in the short side, but I was actually only looking for this pullback to get into here and then establish a new long. So I missed the short and there's no long position. There was nothing to even fake us out, to even tempt us into trying to fade this. It just sunk right below 31. So look, I don't like dollar CAD right now. I, I, I'm really you know, split on where this goes from here. The weekly charts are pretty concerning as well. We've kind of just been consolidating guys into a really nasty region. There's that 31, 30, 31 level. You see how many pivots in price we've gone off that? Former swing highs, pivot, former swing lows, 618, 100% extension, yearly opening range high. What the heck is that? I mean, this thing's got to make a decision, guys, one point or another. 128.80, 129 is essentially key support. Your longer term, 200-week uh, moving average, basic slope support off the lows. Um, <clears throat> key support for, for Looney, right? So I don't, unfortunately, kind of the least conviction trade out of all of them right now um, is dollar CAD. I would... You know, I would think if you get a close below 31, it's still at risk, guys, for, for a move lower. But, man, it, it's just so ugly, and the levels are all over the place. Let me see if I can clean this up for a sec. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, I'm going to clean up this 618. It's a longer term uh, retracement there, but let's just get rid of that. Clear out the shaded region. Shift the focus just to 31. Right here is resistance. Uh, I did, did want to see if this extension. Okay, and this advance completes 100. So two equal legs off the high, off the low rather, right? Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Um, that would suggest to move lower. That would suggest to move lower. Uh, oil, please, says Antonio. Absolutely. So interestingly enough, I do think, like I said, so let me get back to that in a second. Any questions here on Dollar CAD before I move off? Um, You know, this could be just it. Low conviction, guys, low conviction. But let's take a look at oil now that we've taken a look at dollar CAD, right? Here's crude prices. Um, <clears throat> and that's going to be number six. So as Jamie noted in his piece last night, guys, we're of the mindset that, look, these trades are at, these commodity trades, I have gold, maybe a little bit more room to the downside, but approaching uh, longer term support, uh, crude, we talked about this at length. We'll go over the intraday uh, or we'll go near term targets in a moment. But the basic scenario is that, you know, DXY trading near the highs, uh, crude trading near support, 
uh, gold, like I said, maybe a little drive lower, but then trading into support as well. You know, you, you kind of look at the time frame and the seasonalities and where you are. It, it's good general timing to start looking for a little bit more abrupt lows in uh, commodities, a little bit more of a pullback in the dollar. So we'll see if that materializes. But here's the, the crude chart that I want to show you. Um, and where was the crude update? It was what, Sunday? Yeah, crude and gold, we got them here. Where are they? Here we go. So here's the daily chart, and I'll go into the daily chart in a moment. Uh, the level was 66.32. Uh, 764 retracement of the drop uh, from, or of the, excuse me, of the ascent from the lows they made in June, and we had slope there. So if we take the operative pitchfork that we've been working with, here's the weekly chart for crude. Let me show you that. Okay, the operative pitchfork off the lows from 2016, the high from 2017, and the subsequent low. Slope, we were working with this for a while, kind of got nasty, means nothing right now. If we extend that slope to the lows right there, literally we drove into that yesterday and kind of rebounded. Ideally, you get a tag of the lower parallel, which is what we were looking at. But because of what price is doing near term, we can't ignore it. We might not get that level. Um, so back to the daily chart. You know what I mean? There's that slope. There's, you know, basically this is a fourth day and failure to push below 66.32. Okay. Um, long story short. Long story short, Antonio, near-term resistance is right just a bit higher from where we are. Monthly open resistance comes in at 68.39. The 100-day moving average comes in at 68.39. Okay, both the same exact level. That's your near-term level of resistance to break to the upside. Ultimately, obviously, we want to see a break of this three-point touch to get the resumption, but this is your first sort of hurdle. If we get through this, I would expect that you'd probably see a larger a larger move to the upside um, in crude prices. Like I said, the ideal scenario that we were looking for, you know, we shifted our attention lower, obviously, last month. It was a really nice monthly opening range break, shifted the focus looking for a late month low, came mid-month. Um, but here we are with the extension. The ideal scenario is to get a drop into the 200-day moving average, the 618 retracement of the yearly range slope support. Is that 64 or 66? Like I said, we can't be stubborn, right? Momentum grounded out at 40 on the pullbacks here. Price came into a confluence support, and here's the rebound. So if we get through monthly open resistance, look for a break of this basic trend line to mark resumption. Uh, but I do think the risk is starting to shift back to the long side here in crude prices. Intraday, um, you know, I don't really update the intraday levels on these trades too much because it's not something I actually. Uh, intraday trade as often, but um, here's one thing I would uh, keep an eye on. Oops. Oh, I already have it on there. Okay. Okay. A little adjustment to the 100 day moving average there. Um, but levels are pretty clean. Is that a parallel? C60 holding momentum. Do you see how long this has been going on, guys? Since early July, since the July high, since the breakdown below. Every subsequent rebound in momentum has found resistance right at 60. I want to see that change. I want to see that change. And I think you'll get it. I mean, just looking at this objectively on the four-hour chart, here's a lower low in price. Here's a higher low in the oscillator. One of the reference points sub 30, the other one above 30. 
a little bit more pronounced here on the 120 minute chart. And even more so here on the 60 minute, right? Lower low in price on a closed basis, higher low in the oscillator, much weaker signal, but we're there. Okay, watch that 68.39 level, okay? Antonio, initially, that's your first resistance hurdle heading into the US Open. That's the level you need to beat. That's the level you need to beat. Monthly open resistance, 100 day moving average. He says, thank you. Yeah, more than welcome, sir. Uh, so taking a look at that real quick, here, you know, here's the picture for, for gold. Um, not as tempted to think gold has bottomed as much as uh, crude. Um, so let me show you the daily chart first. Well, let me show you the weekly chart first. Here's gold. Okay, bigger picture. So a couple of reasons why we're a little bit skeptical here. Um, here's here's the region both me and Jamie are looking at. You see this 1180 into 1175, 764 retracement. If you bring up the 764 uh, retracement, excuse me, this is the 786. It comes in just above where that is. Still not the low that we made. Um, but if you take a stretch back to the lows that you made right here in 2013, swing low, swing low, former swing high, break acceleration on all sides on every time we pivoted through it both that region converges on the lower parallel. Now this slope has caught the highs from 2015, 2016. This slope has caught the lows for late 2016. Here we are again breaking through. So weekly close is really what's gonna determine this. And this thing is in oversold condition on a weekly basis. Another concern of trying to fight this any which way on the long side. Now we are in the midst of the sixth consecutive week of losses for 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 um, gold. I think we did this drill earlier, right? Just taking a look kind of objectively at the last couple of times we've seen um, you know, six week declines or more. Um, it just doesn't bode well for continually favoring the downside right now. It just shows you that, we, you know, these stretches of uh, six, seven weeks specifically uh, have all been you know, hallmarks at least for near-term turns in price action. So we don't have confirmation that it's time to buy yet. I certainly don't want to jump on the short side from here. If you're holding short exposure, 1209 is kind of your line in the sand. We get back above that, I would be concerned. Uh, gold on the daily chart looks like this. It looks like an objective we break of the initial monthly opening range. If that is correct, we should stay bearish. So again, 1207, remember we just saw 1209, actually 1207 pretty much, the opening range lows for the month. So even if we get a near-term recovery into this, I would still be fearful of some sort of fake out. Ultimately, um, this is the zone of which would be, in my humble opinion, a sweet spot for uh, a bigger, sort of a bigger reversal, bigger rebound in gold prices. But you know everything held constant, guys. The consolidation that we were looking at in momentum, remember we highlighted that earlier in the week as well. Looks like um, you know, it looks like that's breaking to the downside. Resistance held, we turned. Here's the break. We closed below yesterday on the rally. Look for that slope to offer resistance in momentum. Right. Any questions on gold? Here's the intraday chart. Same levels, nothing really to uh, to write home about, but no, I think get a little bit of recovery again. Twelve oh four, the median line. It's kind of where you want to see this thing stall out. Bearish invalidation, 1215. Downside targets, like I said, 1180, um, 1175 specifically. This region is where I'd be interested in looking for a more concerted low. Any questions on gold prices? That is number seven. Uh, who was looking for Kiwi? That was... Peter says me, do you follow silver? It is at a big area. Kelly, I don't. Um, 
at all, really, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. I mean, I'll take a look at the chart, uh, but let me take a look uh, at Kiwi real quick first, and then we'll come back to it. So here's Kiwi Dollar. This one's for uh, Peter. So Pete, the weekly chart on Kiwi, you know, Here's what I'm looking at. Yes, <laughs> he took the words out of my mouth. He says much, uh, I think you meant the same, right? Not the sum, much the same as Aussie, much the same as Aussie, yeah. Much the same as Aussie. Now, for me, the play is gonna be if we get down near 66.52, 64.50 is low week close from 2015, is huge. Um, It'd be a long position. If we get some clarity on near-term price action for a rebound, I think you can play the stretch towards 66.60, 67.20. Um, but below this region, you know, I still think the risk is lower. I still think the risk is lower. So the weekly chart, you know, it doesn't really give you much conviction on trying, wanting to try anything cute on this. Uh, daily chart looks like this, Pete. Looks like the break of a downside uh, slope, which, you know, typically on this breach, on this break, you'd want to see, uh, like real acceleration. It started to look that way, but you know, what's this? So look again, 6660, I see, you know, even if we rally into this room, if into this rally, or even if we rally into this zone, rather there's room, it doesn't necessarily invalidate the downside, but, um, yeah, I just, I don't really like where we turned. The weekly chart has that slope, but Near term, I don't have any lateral levels. Again, the measured move of this consolidation break does target 65.15. Um, so I think that's what you get. You know what I mean? Initial resistance, Pete, initial resistance. Levels haven't changed from, from earlier in the week. Where was the last update on Kiwi? I think it was last week. Yeah, here it is. Thursday's update. No change to any of these levels, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no change to any of these levels. So, you know, this was Thursday night, right? We pushed below. That ended up being resistance on Thursday into Friday, resistance. Okay, here's the open of the week. That's still resistance. Downside break, you're still looking for that drive towards 65.15, 65, 65.617. 65, 65, this is the big zone. It's got a 764 retracement on it, but it's also a 200% extension or basically the measured move of the consolidation break to the downside. That's pretty much the big picture for Kiwi. Now, Pete, my problem, you might, I might sound kind of confident on this, and I, and I am rather confident on this Kiwi trade. The problem is if you're not already in it, how do you attack it? Right? I always tell you guys, knowing the direction is only 50% of the game. You can know the direction on a broader trend and be wrong on every single trade, right? I've seen it happen and I've done it. So the question is, you know, maintaining discipline. How do we approach it if you're not already in it? For me, you know, if we strike into 66, 16, you get a clear cut failure, momentum failure at 60, a decent trigger, might be a decent, you know, short, try targeting 65, 15. But I need to see something pretty convincing in your term price. Where we are right now, there's no responsible place to put a stop. Um, as far as trying to play the long side, that's just not my gig at this point. So Marco says, totally agree, right on. I mean, it's, you know, doing it long enough that I just know when not to get suckered into these trades. And even though we might have really strong inclinations and, and the fundies back it up and all this nonsense, you know, from a trading standpoint, if we're not disciplined, the setup is not there. We don't take it. You buy the, the downside, 65.15. Peter, that's where the limits would be on any short exposure. And that's where I would start to look for a little bit more of, a, of an exhaustion low. So I'd be on the lookout for, a, for, a, for an exhaustion low there. Uh, I'm very hesitant. You know, my type of trading strategy, I'm not really more uh, of an entry kind of guy. So I wouldn't leave an entry at 65.15, for example. But Pete, that is an area of which if we're going to get a bounce, I would start looking for, uh, I would start looking for entries. Does that make sense? He says, okay, wait and see. Yeah, so if you're, if you're short, Pete, that's where you want to take, you know, wrap your trade up. Limits on the inside, probably just below 65.20. He says, I am, right on. So if you're short, this is definitely, I would do something here for sure if reached, okay? 
Um, depending on where your entry is from, if you're northbound of 6660, um, I would go break even. If your if your entry uh, or excuse me, if you're if you're northbound of 6660, I would have my 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 stops there or your limits for to lock in profit. If you're short from anything south of 6660, uh, I'd be break even at this point. In fact, 6616 break would probably see me taking off a little bit from that trade and go break even on the rest. But all intents and purposes, Kiwi um, is one of the cleaner ones. I did want to see the measured move hit. Did want to see that measured move hit. So tricky time periods in price. Any questions, guys? Says okay, uh, that's great. Right on, Peter. Cheers, mate. Any other questions, guys, on any other trade setups that you're looking at across the spectrum? Uh, who was asking, Marco? Is that you on silver or Kelly? Uh, let me take a look at silver for you, man. I haven't, um, I haven't been following price. I know Jamie follows it, but not really my cup of tea. So here's the weekly chart. So Kelly says, uh, thanks. Yeah, a few weeks ago I asked Jamie about it as it's looking like a good entry for a long uh, is near. Oh, sorry about that. Um, you know, Kelly, I don't know if I agree with you, man. I'm just being completely frank with you. It's It's... So this is a confluence region. Let me go over what I'm looking at. So this is a confluence region. This is the 618 extension from the decline off the highs that we made uh, in 2000. Is that 2016 highs? Yeah. Here's your 2018 open. Sorry, that's that's how often I'm following this thing. So here's your yearly open, right? It looks like this is a break of the objective yearly opening range. So basically a February break. Might be a little early, but kind of shifts the focus lower. My Risk on this would be 1450s, maybe these swing lows, swing highs, swing lows. So this region here, 1465, uh, that would coincide with the 50 line, which hasn't been too operative, right? You saw a touch there, but nothing really ever since then. So longer term, if we close the week below 1525, in my humble opinion, that's what the risk would be, Kelly. Um, now you're seeing insane consecutive weekly declines here. It kind of begs um, that indicator just to see what this looks like. <sighs> wow, this is the 10th consecutive weekly decline. I don't think we've seen that in history. At least since not since 1998, <laughs> okay? Puts things in perspective, doesn't it? So Kelly, look, let me take that back. I don't want to say I don't agree. I just don't think the tell is there yet to start asserting such a position. Um, you heard me early in the webinar. I do think that we're heading towards um, a seasonal time and in price where we're trading, uh, where you could see uh, broader commodities, metals. Uh, I don't know about the energy per se, although that has made a pretty decent reversal already. Um, you know, has looking for a low on most of those assets, but we kind of want to see a high in the dollar uh, as well, right, Kelly? So the time is right. Pinpointing a high and a low is a fool's errand. We never want to try to be the one calling the low, right? We look for price action to validate that, to suggest that, but um, I'd be, you know, 1464, 1450 would be a sweet spot. Look, I could be completely wrong. If we close the, the week, uh, Kelly, let's say this thing kind of like, fakes everyone out and just you know mess around with everyone's head close the week back above 1525 well man now now we're talking 
right now now we're talking uh intra week i would not be surprised to see this thing um give us a deeper drop you know there is divergence on the daily chart all things held constant at these levels price action has made a lower low the oscillator has made a higher low so it would be a start but again you know objective is is the name of the game here's your monthly open Here's your monthly opening range. Uh, well, let me actually cite the monthly open as well. Price, 1548, 1548's the monthly open price. Here's your monthly opening range highs, monthly opening range lows. We break on the eight, on the, what is this? The uh, 13th of the month. Suggest you should be looking for a late month low. Do we get it deeper, closer to that 14, you know, region? Would be great. But you're pushing extremes here as far as how many consecutive declines you've made. Definitely, you know, definitely something to keep an eye on. Is it an operable trade for me uh, here at this level? Not quite just yet. But we'll keep an eye on it. Kelly says, um, that's why I ask uh, the man for guidance. I appreciate it as, um, as when it hits for a long to the moon, Michael, to the moon. I mean, I think a lot of the commodities, dude, this is, I think this is, the thing that has me most excited is gold, believe it or not. I watch this thing and, you know, obviously for daily effects, I cover gold uh, extensively. So I've been watching this thing like a hawk. Now I did like the reaction that we got. I think, you know, like, again, you could get a little bit more of a, of a, of a rebound, but for me, uh, sort of the base case scenario is to look for some sort of reactive playoff, 1175, 1180, if we get down there. And DXY, if this holds, uh, would certainly be advantageous, let's say, for <laughs> for a low in uh, in broader commodity markets. All right. Uh, any other questions on any other assets, pairs that you're looking at? I know things are kind of slow right now, guys. And you know, when volatility gets these surges, like I said, and then we fall into these lulls, take a step back. Keep the powder dry, have your levels mapped out, be ready to execute, because when we do see things start to pick up, it'll happen pretty quick. Um, you do have some data coming out of the UK later in the week. You have uh, some import figures and, and stuff coming out from the US as far as uh, US bigger event risks is probably going to be the University of Michigan Confidence Surveys. Um, but specifically for the Aussies, we'll have employment on tap, and you do have all this event risk from the global geopolitical picture, guys. So we'll keep our eyes on that. And we will revisit things tomorrow, uh, or tonight rather, in the update. Hopefully, we get a move on some of these, some of these dollar crosses. Again, base case scenarios look for dollar exhaustion, maybe on a stretch a little bit higher, but you know, ultimately, it is a good level as we went over earlier in the session for this thing to find some kickback. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up there. Best of luck trading, and I will see you all tomorrow morning. Cheers.